of the stories because the stories are completely from somebody's own, you know, discernment and opinion. It's not from an actual point of reference. So I just want to make that clear as I, um, you know, as I get ready to, to, to expound upon this point. And if y'all give me two seconds, I'm transferring my USB back into my desktop because, you know, I want to I want to put a, a image back up. But as I wait for that to load, when we're dealing with biblical genealogy, right? Yeah. Noah comes from the Caucasus Mountains. The, the, the Torah, the Bible, the Quran all agree that when after the flood, right, the boat landed in Mount Ararat, which is the mm -hmm. Caucasus Mountains. So now the, 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 the issue that I'm having with accepting Jews, black or white, claiming that they come from Israel is because in order to in order to establish political legitimacy or or monarchy you have to establish that you are native to the land or that you are descendants of those who are native to the land sure and if anybody is claiming that they're a descendant of Noah they are claiming that they are descendants of the Caucasus mountains and so here's the issue that I'm having scientifically According to the Australian Research Center for Ancient DNA, we can prove that white people, Caucasoid people, because even if you don't identify as white, the term Jew is not a genealogical description. You can't genealogically be a Jew. There's only four phenotypes. Dravidian, Caucasoid, Mongoloid, which is Asians and Koreans and all of them. And then there's Negroid, which is me and Africans. So Jews, whether you Ashkenazi, Kazarian, or whatever other terminology, y'all all fall genetically in the category of Caucasoid. And Caucasoids, according to not only history, but biblical history as well, descend from the Caucasus Mountains. So we have to ask ourselves, if we were here first as Black people, and we know this to be fact, how with, mid with the Middle East, being an extension of Africa, our Caucasoids claiming that they are native to a land that not only they were never there, they were there and inhabited it after us. And so here's my thing, right? As I continue to go down, because uh, I want to make sure I touch on every point. You brought up Jacob, right? Now, we know that there were no J's back then. And people say that they were Y's. Now, I disagree with that as well, but staying on that notion. Jacob would be Jacob, which people would say is Yaqub. Yeah. Now, Yaqub in Hebrew literally means subplanter. And the reason that that's critical and the reason that that's important as I get ready to, um, as I get ready to, uh, to share my screen right now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can do it. I'm going to see since I'm still tapped in on my laptop, I'm going to share it like this. So I'm going I'm to bring my other one up. And then I'm going to hit screen share and I'm going to just pause. So let me come back in. And as I was saying, the reason that knowing the definition is important of Yaqub is because once again, the Bible, I mean, monotheism is, is an entity used by Freemasons in order to communicate with one another. 